Okay, in this video I'm going to do just kind of a quick brief introduction of what are called continuous random variables and the associated probability density functions. So, um, quantities whose values range over an interval of numbers are what are called continuous random variables. Um, and we'll do a kind of a concrete example of that here in example. So, um, the important thing is associated with this continuous random variable, which is often denoted with a capital X. Um, associated with that is what's called a probability density function, and it's denoted f of x. The important thing is to basically calculate a probability that your, um, your random variable is between two particular values. What you do is you integrate um, over those values, excuse me, you integrate over the probability density function, and those values turn into your limits of integration. Um, a couple things. A probability always has to be greater than or equal to zero. So um, our, our, our probability density function, or sometimes they're called PDFs, has to satisfy this restriction. And if we integrate from negative infinity to positive infinity, um, I mean, you're kind of calculating uh, the probability of everything that can happen. Um, the total probability um, always has to add up to 1 or 100%. So that'll be one other thing to keep in mind. Um, oftentimes you'll have to justify or you can justify that a function is a probability density function if it satisfies these requirements. Um, it may not be useful for actually modeling things in the real world but um, it would be a probability density function. Okay so one very basic example here. Um, so suppose you know you call into some call center and the average waiting time Suppose the average waiting time uh, for your phone call to get answered is, let's say, six minutes. Okay. Um, I'm not really going to justify this at all. This gets into, you know, some other things as well. So it turns out that you can model waiting times with um, an exponential function. So it's kind of interesting that uh, somehow there's a, there's a particular function that goes with um, waiting times or failure times. So again, I'm not going to justify that at all. But let's just assume that associated with your um, waiting times is a probability density function. Um, a probability density function. And since it has to do with time, instead of using f of x, I think I'm going to use um, f of t in this case. So okay, so our probability density function f of t well, it's going to have value 0 if t is less than 0. The probability of your call somehow getting answered in less than 0 seconds is 0. You haven't made the phone call yet. Um, again, associated with this um, scenario is going to be a, uh, an exponential function that looks like 1 sixth e to the negative t over 6. And this is going to be if t is greater than or equal to 0. So this is the probability density function that will model this situation. Again, I'm not justifying that at all. Um, one thing that is important is if you know the average waiting time, uh, those values basically get used in your formula. It's going to turn out. But again, a different story. So let's do maybe just, uh, I don't know, maybe one quick question. Suppose the question is, OK, so if we know that your call, uh, the average waiting time is six minutes, let's find the probability. Uh, that your call that your call is answered in the first two minutes. So intuitively, I mean, if I have to wait an average of six minutes, intuitively, I wouldn't expect um, you know there there to be a very high probability that my phone call would get answered in the first two minutes. But let's compute exactly what it is. So again, the idea is we're trying to find the probability that our random variable x is between 0 and 2. And again, um, what that says is we wait between 0 minutes and 2 minutes. So again, all that does is those become your limits of integration, 0 to 2. And then we simply have to integrate 1 sixth e to the negative t over 6 dt. So that would be the function that we have to integrate. 
Okay, so in this case, um, I'm not going to go through all the, uh, the details of the integration. Um, so this is just integrating an exponential function. You could do a u substitution. So when we integrate, we could pull the uh, 1 6 out front. Remember, if you integrate an exponential, if you're multiplying the variable by some constant, which is negative 1 6, you actually divide by that constant, and you can verify that using a u substitution. So dividing by negative 1 6 is equivalent to multiplying by negative 6. So um, again, you can verify that using um, a substitution. So now it's just a matter of simplifying this down. So if I pull the 6 out, that'll cancel. I'll have negative e to the, um, let's see, it looks like we have to plug, um, plug 2 in. So that'll give us negative 2 over 6 minus um, e, excuse me, negative e to the 0. So that's simply going to give us positive e to the 0. Or we'll be left with e to the negative 1 third. Let me see if I can't compute this value real quick. Um, so roughly equal to here. Let's see. Negative 1 divided by 3. Um, I'm getting this to be roughly equal to 0 0.7165. So what's that going to be? 0 0.2835, I believe. So it says roughly there's a 28.35% um, probability that your phone call will get answered in the first two minutes, is all it says. Okay, so I'm not going to go through... I'm going to briefly talk about another. I'm not going to go through it all the way. Suppose we wanted to know the probability that you had to wait um, two or more minutes. Well, I mean, intuitively, you could probably guess that the probability... Okay, well, let's think about it. So if we want to figure out the probability we have to wait two or more minutes, now we would have to set up the... Um, the integral that corresponds to, well, our random variable is going to have value greater, it's going to be greater than or equal to 2. And notice now, okay, so the thing I want to point out is, notice now you'd have an improper integral. Um, so if you've forgotten how to integrate um, when you have infinities in as limits of integration, I've got videos on improper integrals. You may want to take a look at that. Intuitively, though, without doing all of the arithmetic, um, you know, if the, the probability that our phone call is answered in the first two minutes is 28.35%, without doing anything, I can say, well, the probability, I guess, that I wait two or more minutes must be, well, 71.65%, um, kind of the difference. And notice that's simply 1 minus 0.2835. Uh, so there's a roughly a 28% probability my call will get answered in the first two minutes, well, that must mean there's roughly a 72% uh, probability that I have to wait two or more minutes. So, okay, again, just very, very, very basic heads up on probability density functions here. Um, I plan on definitely doing a lot more probability stuff. Uh, feel free to post comments and questions as always, and hopefully I can help you out.